So a few years ago, I posted a video titled Digital Art Tips. And while I still agree with that advice in that video, I noticed I only talked about tablets and art programs. And there's a lot of other advice that I can give you guys. So yeah, this video will be very, very basic tips for digital artists who are just beginning or maybe for you guys who haven't even started digital art and you're thinking about getting into it this is a video for you i do want to mention that if you haven't seen my first video about tablets and programs definitely go watch that um especially because after i made that video i ended up purchasing a really expensive art tablet and i ended up having problems with it even before i finished paying it off and you know, one of my advice was, hey, don't jump into a really expensive tablet because you don't know if you're going to really stick to digital art. And also, it doesn't mean it's going to be the greatest product, you know, in the market for that. So, yeah, seriously, learn from my mistakes. But anyways, getting into the new advice. So, if there's one thing that I'm always telling digital artists is to make it a habit to save your work as often as possible you can never save too much i personally save my work like every i don't know like five minutes or so just because i have been doing digital art for like 10 years now and i cannot tell you how many times my computer crashed or my art program crashed or just something really weird happened and then it just it's just so there you know technology is so unpredictable sometimes so seriously, please, please, please make it a habit to save as often as possible. And saving your work is not hard at all. There are shortcut keys, so you don't always have to be going to the file tab and then save. Like that, that's a lot of work for some people. Some tablets have um, shortcut key buttons installed in there to make it one click away. Or, um, you know, if you are using a laptop or just anything with a keyboard, obviously, control s for save you guys just, you just gotta tap that and it saves which actually brings me to my second advice thing which is to memorize your shortcut keys because they will save you a lot of time and it's, it's just so easy man if you have a keyboard which you probably do if you're not working like on an ipad or something or even ipads you can buy keyboards for them now huh? okay but anyways keyboards memorize like the super basic shortcut keys i would say memorize for sure undo which is Control z memorize save which is Control s copy and paste are very important to know as well Control c for copy Control v for paste i'm pretty sure i hope i'm right oh my god most art programs will have the same shortcut keys but you know uh, i think it might depend on the computer or maybe it is an art program but seriously just go to your file go through all the commands that you use the most and right next to it will be the shortcut keys so memorize those super easy memorize undo and save please for the love of god memorize those some tablets actually have shortcut key buttons on it that you can assign to you know shortcut keys and it makes like everything one button away it's super easy my tablet that I currently use has eight buttons that I assign to things I use the most. So from top to bottom, it's undo, save, new from clipboard, hue saturation box, transform, deselect, deselect, <laughs> um, copy, and paste. Those are the eight buttons that I use that I memorize. It's really easy. And some tablet pens also have buttons on them that you can assign to certain things. So... For this tablet pen, my button is the eyedropper tool so I can pick up colors. Um, but I've seen some people use the button for like erasers or some people use the button for undo. So yeah, seriously, just if you have any buttons to assign to things, use them. Trust me, they will save you like a couple of seconds. But if you don't, just memorize the keyboard. Very easy. Please do it. My third advice is to be as organized as you possibly can. Have a folder titled WIP for work in progress or you know a folder titled sketches or something like that and save all of your unfinished work there and then have a separate folder for all of your finished work and you can you know expand on that have you know you can have folders for comics and folders for sketches folders for illustrations or commissions and stuff like that um but yeah seriously it's so easy to lose your files on the computer 
you know, especially if it's like a computer that you share with your family or, or, you know, with a sibling or something like that. And you just have all of this different information on that. It's so easy to lose your stuff. So please have folders to keep all of your work. It's, it's going to save you some time looking for that stuff. My next advice would be to have an extra USB drive to keep all of your art in. This, of course, you know, if you have the money for it, it's good. Um, if you don't, it's not going to ruin your life. But definitely save up for one, I suggest it. Because, you know, it's good to have all of your art in USB drives. Especially when you've been doing it for so long. I have art, digital art, from 2011. And if I tried to save all of that art from 2011 to now on my computer, I would not have any space in my computer for new art. So I put all of my old art in a USB drive, delete it from my computer, I have more space, and I have all of it in one tiny little thing that I can carry with me wherever I want to go. So definitely do that. It's really important to back up your art because again, technology is so unpredictable. You never know when your computer is just going to fry up. You're going to lose all of your stuff. So it's going to be good to have it on a USB drive. I'm sure you guys are tired of listening to me telling you to save your art 20 different ways. So this next advice will be about art programs or, you know, more on how to organize your art program. So you picked an art program out. Fire Alpaca, Medibang, Clip Studio Paint, whatever. When you first open it up, you're going to notice that there's a bunch of windows on the side. Um, you know, a color wheel and the layers window, the navigation or navigator window. Um, this is your workspace. So some art programs will have like everything open and you're not going to use half of it. And some art programs will give you some things and you realize there's some certain tools that you wish were right there. Why is it not there? All of this is customizable. Customize your workspace. Make sure that whatever you think you're going to use the most is there and it's pinned there. A lot of art programs will let you customize your workspace and then you can register it. So for example, let's look at my workspace. Um, not a lot of things open because I like it somewhat simple. So you'll see I have a color wheel because that's pretty important. The brush window right here so I can pick between my brushes. The window under that are the brush settings so I can adjust the size, opacity, texture, all that stuff. On the other side, I have the navigator tool so I can zoom in and out and then I have the layers and then obviously right over here on the very, very left, I have all of the tools. Um, there's also this bar up here for like new file and stuff like that and save but I never use that stuff. I wonder if there's a way to get rid of that. There probably is. But this is my workspace. Pretty simple. Everything I need is right here. I have it registered, so if I go under window and then I go to workspace, you'll see <laughs> it's named Babe Magnet. I don't know why I named it ba Babe Magnet. I, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, you can register. So after I set it up, I would just press register workspace. It'll make me name it. And then you can reset to default as well. So if I press that, this is what Clip Studio Paint looks like when you first download it and you open it up. Notice how it's weird looking. I don't like it. So um, that's why I made my own workspace because this just makes me really uncomfortable. So let's go back to Babe Magnet. There you go. So um, if you go to Windows as well, you'll see all of these things on this list. Those are all different <laughs> windows to have. I can have all of these open if I want, but I'm pretty sure it would run very slowly. So yeah. Um, whatever art program you're using, go to window, look at all these things you can have, um, set it up. You don't have to have the color wheel on the left, you can have it on the right. It's just set it up to whatever is most comfortable for you. Register that. Sometimes it'll save automatically, so don't worry about it too much. But yeah, just make sure that your workspace is something that you're comfortable in. Anyways, I think that's going to be the end of this video. Like I said, these are just some super basic tips for digital artists. If you want me to get into more specific things, um, first go through my channel because I do have tutorials on very specific things like making brushes and shading and stuff like that. Um, but if there's something that I have not done yet or if there's something that you want me to update, let me know and I'll look into it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please be good outlets and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!